Hello everyone, this is Jeremy, and welcome to episode 3 of Installation Route. Uh, if you look around here, our base has changed a little bit. I put a grass slash dirt floor on because a bunch of stuff was floating one tile off the ground, and it largely was floating one tile off the ground on purpose. Uh, like, I had all my machines previously right floating one tile off the ground, and that's because I like to be able to run wires or whatever underneath them for automation purposes. Uh, later if needed and normally that just means digging one tile down when you need to run a wire down there but one tile down is not diggable so I just bumped everything up by a block uh, it also makes everything look nicer I think I don't know grass looks nice ish um, I got rid of these pillars as best I could I for now can can't break this riveted sheet metal uh, although I believe that will change at some point you try breaking that with this, right? In fact, we may as well just make this our main pickaxe. Yeah, even this can't break it. So maybe at some point we can get rid of it. Maybe not. If not, that just stays there forever. All right, anyways, um, moving on. Today, I would like to make Terra Steel. So I think the two big goals for today are Terra Steel and better mana production through the uh, Petro Petunia. Petro Petunia. Yeah, I always call this a petrol penulia for some reason. Anyways, uh, this quest asks for a whole block of terra steel, which means we need to set up a system that will make a fair bit of terra steel. Um, I think that's really telling us that we're going to need a lot of this stuff. So I want to build a system where with the press of a button, it will dispense one of each of these items onto the uh, terrestrial agglomeration plate. If... If and only if we have all of them. So I think there's, what, eight or nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different items here. I want to build a system that, you know, either on a press of a button or on a redstone timer, um, it will dispense one of each if and only if we have all of them. I don't, you know, if we're missing pulp biomass, for instance, I want it to wait instead of being like, all right, we'll have the other seven items, you know, and ideally it'll make it easy for us to tell which specific item is missing. So... Uh, well, let's start by building the agglomeration plate. This doesn't look too bad. Uh, we're gonna have to make a fair bit of lapis. Um, you know what? Maybe first then, because we're gonna need a lot of lapis, that means we're gonna need a lot of hardened glass, which means we're going to need a, uh, hold on. We're gonna need a lot of hardened glass, which means we're gonna need a lot of obsidian. Where is regular hardened glass? Here we go. Well, that's made by pulverized obsidian, which is, well, pulverizing obsidian. Uh, at least for now, which means that will be easiest made if we can automate lava. I don't think we can make this yet. This requires a bit of stuff, but we can make lava as soon as we make a magma crucible. Um, so yeah, the nether bricks, I think we determined we can make that out of sacrificing blood. And then everything else here we can already do. Oh, I also moved all of our automated resource producer thingies all the way tucked in the corner, and they're feeding into caches now. I don't know how many items a basic cache holds. More than a chest, I can tell you that much. A basic cache is 20,000, and they can be upgraded with these, you know, 80,000 for a hardened cache if needed. So they hold just a lot more items before they'll, uh, before they'll ever fill up. I already had two pieces of nether brick, and I crafted a third to make the... Uh, the specialization i think that makes it it's either faster or um faster or uses less en less energy per operation uh, i'm not quite sure or both i don't know let's upgrade the things and find i, mean, I guess jdi tells us right so uh we're making lava it's from stone it's 300,000 rf without and 300,000 width okay so it probably just makes it faster um without let's see what is their power oh we don't make enough power to use this we'll, we'll put a different augment in there that's okay anyways for now I, we can throw just plain old cobble is fine i think it uses the exact same amount of energy for stone versus cobble now this does take literally forever uh, eight, at 80 a tick, we are 1% done. But we set this up now. Um, there's a... I think one of the augments makes it more efficient, right? Less energy, something like that? Maybe not. No, it looks like there is one that makes it use less energy. I don't want to put this in because that makes it use more power. And we, we only make 400 RF a tick. So, uh, yeah, I guess we just leave it as is. All right, well, here we go. We are now making eight... Or we are now making lava... Very slowly. 
but it is automated. One of the ingredients for the agglomeration plate, agglomeration, amalgamation, I always get those confused, is the rune of mana. So the mana seal is trivial to make, we can make that. The mana pearl, though, requires an ender pearl, and we got two ender air bottles from a quest, and I was thinking, like, how am I supposed to get the other two for it? Well, uh, to make this, well, it turns out there's a toll type in here. Um, it, it doesn't show in JEI. Uh, but if you read the tooltip, which I didn't do, throw this into stone, mine the understone, pulverize the understone, repeat. So I think if we take stone and the two we were given, uh, do this. Oh, cool. It even affects multiple blocks at once. Mine that. And then if we pulverize this understone, we have a high chance. Oh, we're guaranteed to get the bottle back. And we have a chance to get the understone back. So, um, in fact, if we... For purpose of automating this, let's set up a, uh, let's set up a furnace, or not a furnace, um, pulverizer, that instead of having the speed augment, we put the, uh, secondary chance output augment in. With only one secondary output, um, augment, I think we're still short of 100% on the, on the secondary output, but it's, uh, gonna be pretty close to 100%. So anyways, let's, um, let's see, out of two, we got two out of two. Lucky. Kind of curious how much this covers. Wow, quite a large area. Uh, I think I'm just gonna, we don't have to be terribly efficient with it then. Put a bunch down. Swap it out. That makes it pretty easy to make under pearls. And here's six under pearls. Uh, can we under pearl out of them? We probably can, it's probably not worth trying. Whoop. Apparently we can't teleport with Ender Pearls. Never mind, we cannot Ender Pearl out of the box. Alright, well, uh, here we go. There's a Mana Pearl, and uh, apparently there was a quest that told us how to do that. What does Ring of the Mantle do? Uh, Lexica Batania. What's the thing I have to hold for you to tell me what that does? It uses mana to give you a haste effect. Alright, well... I have a spare ring slot. I'll take it. I have to say, this method of making lapis in the induction smelter is very unique. I don't think any pack has uh, made me look quite as hard in JEI for recipes as this one. Well, maybe Interactions has. Um, but between this pack and Interactions, they both do some very unique things. You know, they, they go outside the box for standard recipes. Funny, considering we're stuck in a box. Um, but yeah, it... Whenever, like, whenever I want to do something here, I have to, you know, it, it's difficult to find the optimal way to do it. And I think that's, uh, it's very good. It makes, um, it makes for a very different experience from before. And for someone like me that's played a lot of Minecraft, different, it's good. So, if I grab one of each of these runes we've made so far, that's all the tier 1 runes, plus our lapis, makes the plate. Now, uh... Which, how do I... I know there's a way to do this. Is there not? There's a hotkey you press that brings up... Oh, there we go. Uh, we need another... One, two, three, four. Four blocks for the um, multi-block. So, I think I think that's it, right? That's all. So, I need one more block of lapis. I can do that. Give me this. Oh, no, I have blue dye on me already have a piece of blue stained glass left. All right, there we go. That should be the last lapis we need for the immediate future anyways. Um, cool. Here's the terrestrial agglomeration plate. Now let's move on towards gathering all the materials that go into this. So on this list, we can uh, start by painting the ones that are non-trivial. This requires some crafting and some materials. Uh, clay is trivial, I think. This is trivial. This requires some crafting on materials. Gunpowder, um, if we make an alchemy catalyst, we can make that trivial. So let's, uh, here, we'll pin the alchemy catalyst instead of gunpowder. Lime balls, I believe we can craft, yeah, from living matter. And emeralds we can craft from, uh, from the block recipe. So, it's just these three. Um, let's make the catalyst first because... The, oh, no, actually, let's do these first because these require a little bit of time for stuff to grow. So, we'd have to grow some type of plant for pulp biomass. Uh, cactus seems like a pretty good choice here. 
because we need a fair bit of cactus for cellular blocks as well. And then we have to grow beetroot, carrots, and potatoes. Um, yeah. All right, well, a uh, couple options. We could either grow it in a farm or we could grow it with the phytogenic insulator and uh, some type of phyto grow. And I'm thinking we'll actually do this because I believe we can make rich phyto grow quite easily. So niter comes from pulverizing um, sandstone or similar sandstone or sandstone slabs. Uh, I think later we get an easier way to make this, but for now, this process is fine. Uh, rich slag is actually trivially easy to make in this pack. We can make redstone ore by surrounding redstone or stone with redstone, and then we induction smelt that with sand, and we have a 50% chance at rich slag. And it doesn't even cost us redstone. Basically, for an input of stone and sand, right? One stone and one sand, we get 50% chance at rich slag. So that's easy, and charcoal, obviously, is trivial. And then we can charge this in a energetic infuser i presume yep we can make one of those uh it's not even a lot of energy that makes flux phyto grow and from there um what is this non-fertilizer input oh, okay uh well we can't make this yet this does make automation easier but um really yeah that'll let us grow these things in you know not in like tremendous quantities and it won't be fully automated but it'll be orders of magnitude faster than trying to do it on a with a conventional farm with very little in terms of speed boosters it's nice that we get 16 final grow per craft so out of 16 of each input we get four stacks of output only at this stage should i bother to actually check the phytogenic insulator recipe um we can't make this yet because of the energy of tin ho it requires beryllium which i think requires this stuff which is the drill grinder and uh yeah stuff stuff we can't do yet dream wood yada 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 so um i guess we have to make a conventional farm whoops if we're going to have to make a conventional farm we may as well use what growth boosters we have and in this pack that might just be the agricardation i don't know if there's anything else uh there probably is and i think we'll run into it later if we if there is but uh for now this is what we have access to so this flower if i plant it here and i wear my Mana Seer Monocle. We can observe that it provides a growth boost in a relatively large area around it. Uh, I don't actually know if they stack. I think they do, but each additional one you place consumes additional mana. So because mana is a limited resource, uh, I'm only going to use one for now. Anyways, um, it does need mana in its area to work, so... Oh, by the way, also, because a farm is probably something we don't need to visit all that often, I decided to put it on, like, a upper layer. Hopefully, we don't have to come up here all too often. So it turns out that the various seeds we need uh, to plant for this, the beetroot, carrot, and potato seeds, well, the be beetroot has a seed, the rest you just plant themselves, uh, you get them from alchemy catalysting initially from uh, wheat. So we're going to have to make the alchemy catalyst first after all. Uh, the tricky part in here is the blaze rod, but we already set up a way to make blaze powder earlier, so it's actually not all that tricky. Um, I can, oh boy, why are you out of energy? Why is everything out of energy? Stop running. Uh, all right then, that should fix it, right? I think I was trying to run one machine too many at a time. Maybe two machines too many at a time? But it looks like we're most, nope, we're still running too many machines at a time. Dang it. Ah. All right, turned a few of them off and we're okay now. Uh, nine buckets of lava is okay for the foreseeable future. Anyways, um, yeah, we can, just make sure that number is going up. Yeah, we can take our compactor and compact this. You know, let's not quite do all of it. Let's do that. 20. So let's make four blaze rods. And with that, we can make the brewing stands or the alchemy catalyst. And we'll make a second alchemy catalyst because it's used to make the conjuration catalyst later. Put the alchemy catalyst underneath our manacle. And now we can transmute into potatoes and then into carrots, and then into beets. And I believe if we go far enough along this route, we can even get to cactus. Uh, slime ball becomes cactus. Never mind. Let's grab one of our slime balls and transmute that into cactus. There we go. And now let's set this up to be auto farmed. I don't know if the agricarnation affects cactus because cactus growth is uh, 
like it, I think it applies bone meal effects to stuff around it and I don't think cactus can be bone meal but I don't know it can't hurt right so um I planted some cactus up here as well now we just need a way to automatically harvest the crops when fully grown and if necessary to replant them a nice thing unlocked by the conjuration or whatever catalyst this is the alchemy catalyst is that uh we can now make uh glowstone this is useful for making the floating flowers so that we don't actually have to plant our flowers under it's a small little convenience thing i also set up a thing here where i can flip a switch to if i want it in catalyst mode or no catalyst mode later we'll just have multiple mana pools but for now since we're not making that much mana this will function pretty well at first, my plan was to harvest everything with a horn or drum of the wild, but I ran into a bit of a problem. Let's see if I can get it to just close once. Ah, it gets everything. Uh, yeah, it, it picks up literally everything. Like, it harvests everything. I clearly don't want that. I only want it to harvest things that are grown. So, um, I'm going to test out the drum to see if the drum behaves any differently. If not, we're going to, uh, have to come up with a... Or yeah, like if the drum behaves the same way, it harvests everything as opposed to only fully grown crops, we're going to have to be a bit more clever. For the purpose of this test, I just have a pulse mana spreader pointed at a drum, and that's not what I wanted to see. All right then. The only truly fully automated system I can think of is one that uses the fact that Batania makes it so that dispensers can plant crops, to plant the crop, and then wait long enough so that statistically it is you know 90 plus percent chance to be grown and then pulse a drum of the wilds or similar harvest it send the seeds back into the dispenser repeat the process however that's super mega clunky um that is like the way a pure batania uh we, you know farm of any sort works but um i don't know i'm totally unimpressed so i think what i'll do is uh just harvest it manually from time to time um, the trigger, or the cactus part is fully automated, that's nice. The rest of it, I just have to come up here and right-click a bunch of things from time to time. And for now, this will suffice. Um, this will probably be our farming method until we get to, uh, until we get to the Flux Vital Grow. Um, and then we will use that to make, you know, one block automated, fully automated farms by automating the production of Vital Grow. So, uh, yeah. This is good enough for now. We don't even need a tremendous amount. I just need enough to make, well, pulp biomass is, I guess we can make this out of cactus or even sugarcane. Um, so yeah, I think I'll, uh, we have this automated cactus farm. I might expand the cactus part a bit just so that we get even more cactuses because I think I'll use cactus to make the, uh, the pulp biomass. This requires four full, uh, cactuses to work i mean we can automate pumpkins and melons pretty easily too those or even now vines are a bit trickier huh yeah let's let's just uh let's just expand our cactuses to make pulped biomass oh i have a better idea if we use cyclic's automated user automated user we can use this to uh right click the crops to harvest them and i believe if memory serves me right the cyclic one is one that has an aoe like we can configure it to click in a whole area so one should be able to target the entire area um i think we can even make one of these i just have to make a rune of sloth which requires a roth zephyrium Arothium, and a uh, rune of autumn but rune of autumn is trivial to make um and this requires the dust which is blizz powder which we can make out of our experience uh yeah well we can either just use a rune of air to make for it that's probably easier but we can also make it out of our experience and nighter plenty of options been doing a lot of rune crafting so i set up a system to automatically complete the craft when it's done a dispenser with the wand when it receives a redstone signal will try to complete the craft um, but it's also exceptionally loud, so I uh, have a lever to turn it off when we're not using it. Anyways, that's Autumn Runes, which leads one more step to Sloth Runes, which shouldn't be that bad. In fact, I should just be able to grab all my ingredients here. Um, so Sloth is Air, Autumn, Mana Item, and... Let's see, Air, Autumn, Mana Item, the Bucket of Whatever... And I have mana pearls somewhere. There we go. Alright, do the thing. Uh, no, don't do the thing. What did I do wrong? Air, autumn, 
I'm not any mad item. Diamond or ingot. All right. Well, it has to be diamond then. Let's try that again. So, mana diamond, rune, rune, and there we go. Looks like the autonomous user here is configured to use 10 R if a tick while active, regardless of the delay. So even if it's on cooldown, uh, it's using power, which is kind of weird, but okay. Um, I think what that means is because... I mean, 10 RF a tick is that much, but for now, power does not grow on trees. So we're just going to turn it on in spurts. Um, and in addition to that, let's see, uh, I want it to, if we, I found that if I, at least if I'm placing blocks set to three by three uh, or, or five by five, it, it can when we power it on, place, you know, the blocks in that entire area. So I suspect it can also use, um, like it can also harvest crops in that same size area so we just need to run a cable up to our farm and then uh, set this up to click all our plants and then we'll have an automated farm and it works like a charm set its size to nine by nine i believe that's the size of our farm uh and then it's i think it chooses its targets randomly so like it'll eventually get around to hitting that um but yeah it harvests all our crops and then the uh the uh, which one this one the hopper hawk picks it up and everything ends up in here so now we have an uh, automated crop farm i love it the only thing not automated in this well two things not automated in this farm are the emptying of the output chest but for now it's uh, i can do that by hand and the resupply of mana to this pool um which we'll do once we have sparks so the uh agricarnation here probably uses up the mana pool about 10 percent of a mana pool an hour is my estimate uh but based on that you know that the 20 percent in this pool will last for 10 percent an hour might even be too high of an estimate i don't know it doesn't use a lot of mana is my point so uh yeah right now i'm gonna call the system done enough I've gone ahead and built a bunch of droppers here. So there's eight droppers. Each one holds one of the materials that go into the crafting recipe. They all point into a chain of hoppers that eventually points into an open crate. Now, out of each one of these droppers, we measure whether or not it has items with the comparator. And then that uh, feeds into, I'm using a lamp here just for visibility sake. If any lamps are off, that means that there are no items in its associated we're okay no that's not true uh i because of the way i'm doing my redstone the lamps are literally useless all right well ignore the lamps um those that, that's that's great each lamp cost me eight pieces of redstone i'm glad i made that uh i haven't tested this yet if you can't tell by the fact that well i don't know what works or what doesn't work but anyways um this feeds into a n-way not gate or n-way and gate the point is that all of these um cellular or all of these droppers must have items in order for this redstone signal to get through so let me show you what i mean if say this dropper is out of items we ran out of pulp biomass when we click this button we should see that the redstone signal that gets sent gets stopped here um these each of these comparators is on uh two ways you can do it with subtract mode or compare mode but uh yeah the way i have it set up is and if any of these um signals is out then it'll cause the signal to stop there so we not the signal coming out of here right we convert it into a binary just no not gate it um and then uh yeah we get eff effectively it, it's a cut in the wire where uh where any dropper that doesn't have items is um the reason that these lamps are aren't turning off is that apparently lamps can be i, I didn't know this actually it can be uh pseudo powered or bud powered thought it only applied to like droppers and stuff but no apparently applies to lamps too so um when one of these torches turns off it powers or when this block here is powered uh that powered block is powering the air or could power the air block if the air block up here accepts power um real quick test if i i don't, I don't actually know my vanilla redstone terribly well I put a slab up here because a slab cannot be powered. Does that? No, that doesn't. Okay, never mind. Doesn't make a difference. Yeah. Um. Basically, pseudo power means that the block above the lamp, if it receive, if it can be powered and is powered. Nah, how to say? If whatever. The point is because the block above the lamp is powered, the lamp turns on. Um, and that's because of the way I'm doing my knot gate. So, eh, whatever. 
close enough. Anyways, uh, if everything works, though, if there's items in every single slot, when I press this button... Uh oh, I didn't do anything. That was supposed to send one item into each of these drop... Oh, it did. Wait. Why are the hoppers not feeding into... Oh! I see what's happening. Uh, the open crate has to be a block higher, doesn't it? It can't drop items here because it's... Uh, because it's uh, covered by the amalgamation plate or whatever. Because like there's not a full block space to drop it there. I could move everything up a block. No, I can't. There's not enough room to move everything up a block. Um, all right, let me fix that real quick. I'll come up with something. This is a bit of a hacky temporary solution, but as far as hacky temporary solutions go, I don't think it's all that bad. Um, so uh, this hopper, instead of feeding directly into the open crate, now feeds into an item pipe that brings it up a block. Uh, I suppose, yeah, no, it has to be this way. Hoppers can't feed up. There's no uppers in the pack, unfortunately. So anyways, let's try that again. Hit the button. All the items come into here. They flow through the pipe. Man, that pipe is slow. But, uh, jeez, my bad. Um, that drops all the items there. That Solgania keeps our magnet from yoinking it. And I forgot to make sparks. <laughs> Spark. All right, let's make a couple of these real quick. Uh, these are required to actually transfer the mana to the... Uh, from the mana pool to the terrestrial agglomeration plate. So, where is this? And some petals. All right. Uh, sure, I got a lot of these. I knew I was forgetting something. Okay. So, we put a spark on the mana pool. Spark on the plate. All right, now what? Now why aren't you working? I should have done it. Aerosteel. Plate. Eight items. Let's make sure we have those eight items, I guess. Let's put a couple things away. Sure, that's nine item slots. All right, let's make sure we have all eight of these items here. Uh, that's eight items. Maybe I have the wrong color petal. Mystical green. No. All right, let's figure out what I did wrong. Oh, that's the wrong block. Uh, I think it has something to do with my exchanging gadget pro or my swapping wand. Probably grabbing this block when I was trying to swap those out at one point. Whoops. Um, all right, well, let's... Uh, for now, I think I can just reinsert the items into here. And they'll go into that pipe. And do your thing. Come on. Work, work, work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... It's still not transferring mana though, which means something is still not right. Ah! Sneaky. The hidden block was also wrong. Put the spark back and put the items back. Alright, please work. I'm begging you. I expected this project to be a lot simpler than it was, but uh... Well, the mod list in this pack means that we don't really get a lot of the nice... Ooh, done quality of life tools that I'm used to. So instead, we have to make do with what we've got. And what we've got is sometimes uh, vanilla mechanics, vanilla redstone. So anyways, um, yeah, it takes it from when I press a button to when the items actually get dropped. It's probably the slowest part of the crafting process. Uh, but we can add up, we can add another system that will automatically pick up the crafted item when it's done. So with this, and then we can replace this button with some type of timer. And uh, yeah, with that, we have automated-ish uh, or Terra Steel that even shuts off when any of the materials runs out. There's something very weird happening with the insertion of wood into caches. Only wood. Uh, or maybe it's all materials, just because wood is the one I've emptied. There's some magic block at 64. Like, when, it, when the count reaches 64, regardless of whether it's locked or unlocked, it will not insert more. However, if I insert past it, if I go to 65, it's like, oh yeah, we can, we can keep going. Sorry about that. Uh, I have no clue why. But uh, yeah, it's caused my wood cache to become jammed a few times. Um, I think it's only, it, it probably affects all of these, but I'm only experiencing with wood because it's the only one that I empty on a regular basis to make more charcoal with. But it's very, very weird. Uh, and it all happens with caches. Like hoppers and caches. When I had chests, it didn't happen, so who knows why that's happening. Added a hopper hop then to pick up the final product. 
and now just every for, for now i think i'm just gonna press a button every couple of seconds uh as, as long as i space the presses apart far enough like they can, we can have multiple sets of items in transit in the system at a time right the bottleneck will just be how long it takes for them to really the items spend 90 percent of the time going through that stupid uh item pipe so until i get better item pipes though there's not much i can really do about it but uh yeah, the good thing is in this pack, ooh, well, we're almost out of mana. Ter Terra Seal doesn't quite use as much mana as it normally does, um, but it looks like it still does use a reasonable amount of it, and that's probably all that we can make for now. So I think the next step is to set up better uh, mana production with the Petrol Petunia. First off, we have to craft eight of these, so that should do it. Yep, excellent. Uh, eight is probably more than we can actually power for now, but we'll we'll eventually be able to do to actually fuel all eight. So this is uh, invested in the future. The tooltip here, or the JI tooltip here, says that heated water can be used. Uh, it produces per bucket twelve hundred mana at twenty mana per tick. For reference, the um, uh, these things, endo flames, each one produces one and a half mana per tick and it burns fuel for half of the stated burn time. So, uh, 1,600 or 16,000 ticks, it burns it for half that time, and one and a half mana per tick is, what, half eight, that, so 12,000 mana? So, every two buckets of heated water, wait, no, every 10 buckets of heated water is as much as a block of charcoal, but each one of these flowers burns it much faster. Anyways, uh, heated water is literally just you take a water bucket and you smelt it in a furnace to heat it. So I think we should be able to make heated water very, very quickly. In fact, it's a, only a 2000 RF operation, whereas I think most furnace recipes, actually most furnace recipes are probably 2000 now that I think about it. Yeah, except the dust smelting is cheaper for some reason. But basically, most furnace recipes are 2,000. Switching our mana generation over to these petrol petunias means that we don't need the dropper here anymore. I'll get rid of that in, in a minute. But uh, yeah, that, that eliminates the need for items to be sitting on the ground all the time, which is really annoying. So anyways, how am I making the fuel? Well, I have an aqueous accumulator getting water. That's pushed into a fluid transposer, which fills buckets. That's pushed into a redstone furnace, which heats them. Uh, into another fluid transposer that empties the buckets and then we have to do this weird piping thing so for now we have access to some really crappy pipes the longer your length of wooden pipe is from simple wooden pipes the worse the performance is however if i push directly from a fluid transposer into these build craft pipes the performance is also terrible so i found that if i have exactly one length of wooden pipe here we get a good uh good mix basically it extracts as fast as we can or faster than we can push up um or the faster than our fluid transposer can fill itself, so it's fast enough. Anyways, that heated water gets stored into a tank, and then petrol petunias can either uh, extract from a source block or from a fluid tank uh, at like one level below them. So these eight share a. What did I just pick up? Oh, I still get cactus in my inventory all the time. It's a little annoying. But anyways, uh, all eight of these can share this uh, fluid tank. And right now we're actually, I think our mana production is limited by our mana spreader. Um, more so than it is our water production. Some of these aren't even burning all the time because uh, they're, I don't know. In any event, we're, we're producing more mana than we were before. This thing is constantly going off. Uh, there's even a potency lens on it and it's still, um, please, it's still producing, like it's still full all the time. So we're going to need a upgraded spreader soon let's see elven or probably elven tier uh but that requires elementium and dreamwood which requires elven trade but for now our increased mana production should allow us to hit this button a few more times which will result in a little bit more terra skill well, in fact one more piece and we can complete the quest let's do that real quick make the terra steel yes we're going places. All right, give me all nine of those. Become one of these. All right, so we did this quest. No rewards, but this quest does give uh, some really good rewards. These overgrowth seeds can be used to double the processing speed of any flower. Um, typically, they're used on these producing flowers. 
to increase the rate at which they uh, produce mana, but you can also use them on functional flowers that have like a meaningful processing speed. Wouldn't use it on something like a Clayconia because it's already instant. The last step to get to Elven Trade then is to make the Elven Gateway Core. I think we can make all of these things, it's just that it's going to take a little bit of time. We have to make the table too. Uh, but we are a little short on time for today. So why don't we wrap up here? We'll come back next time, make the Elven Gateway Core, and start trading with the Elves. The biggest, th immediate thing we get off that though is, uh, what are they called? Ducks. Flux, uh, not Flux Ducks, but uh, Item. Item. Yeah. Item ducks. So item ducks lets us actually transfer items without being painfully slow. Um, yeah, fluid ducks, and yeah, a lot of stuff in this pack is gated behind the elven trade. So look forward to that. Um, but that'll be for tomorrow. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.